Wrestling fans, thank you so much for tuning in to Wrestling Changed My Life. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please consider leaving a rating and a review. The more we get, the more this show has bubbled up to wrestling fans just like you. That's something that I definitely want to like just get the message out for people is yeah, like wrestling can get you, but it, it is a means to an end. It will get to it will get you where you need to be, but it's not who you are. We can endure anything and adapt and pivot and change. Wrestling gave us that ability. I would say nothing in life has impacted me more than the things wrestling has taught me in terms of self-reflection, resilience. Toughness. Some guys have it, some guys don't. Adversity, 100%. How to pick myself up and be a man after I failed. And everything that has shaped my life and where I'm at today would not be there without the values and basically the, the lessons I've learned through the sport of wrestling. For me, wrestling saved my life because it, it allowed me to focus and channel my energy. We're fortunate if you wrestled because if you wrestled, natural talent helps, but it's, it's 5% of the ingredient. It pales in comparison to heart and technique and effort it humbled me, taught me humility. Nothing can hit, humble you more than wrestling. I think it's the learning to adapt, right? You learn, you learn how to adapt, you learn how to solve problems. You know, if I look back at my time I spent wrestling, if it gave me one thing more than anything else, it's mental toughness. Welcome back to Wrestling Changed My Life. This is your host, Ryan Warner. Our guest today is an Olympic gold medalist, Tamara Mensa Stock. What a conversation we have, folks, and what a summer Tamara had, winning the gold at the Olympics, and that comes after she won the World Championships in 2019 and a bronze medal at the 2018 World Championships. She's undoubtedly one of the best women's wrestlers to ever come out of the U.S., and I was so excited that she came on the show. Fan of the week goes to, got it right here, my man Adolfo Sato Longo Jr., a wrestling coach, a University of Ozarks alum. Give him a shout. King Panda 97 KG on the gram. Thank you for the support, my friend. Greatly appreciated. And we have some news from our sponsor, Spartan Combat. The Spartan Combat Nationals are coming back next April 2022. So April 8th through the 10th, 2022, Jacksonville, Florida. All styles will be competing. Beach, freestyle, Greco, Team duels, folk style, you name it. It's the only tournament that I can think of that has all these different styles in one setting. We'll have more information on how you can register, but in the meantime, go to SpartanCombat.com to check out the deets. That's it, folks. Let's give it up for the great Tamara Mensa Stock. Well, Tamara, welcome to the podcast. How are you? I am. I could be better. How are you? Folks, she's recovering from COVID right now, so we, uh, we're very grateful that she's you know trooper and hopped on the podcast. Uh, doing well today. First off, what is like the last, has it been six weeks or four weeks since the Olympics? Um, honestly, I think now it has officially been four weeks. Tell us about your life post-Olympic champion. Has it just been a whirlwind? Yes and no. It's been a lot more conversating and uh a little bit more travel but at the same time not really because you know the wrestling life you travel a lot so that's something that I've been used to but I have gotten to be able to travel with my husband a lot more so that's been a super duper bonus and he's a wrestler as well right yes he wrestles for nine and a half years and he's also struggling with COVID <laughs> We're stay strong out there guys <laughs> yeah. so walk us through like the the next you know you you win the Olympic gold medal like what are you doing the next couple of days I mean is it just like a lot of zoom interviews with folks I mean what what is it like you know in the days following that you you win the Olympics and because of the way the structure was actually at this Tokyo Olympics, um, the next day I was cheering on the rest of my teammates and the day after that and the day after that. Didn't really get to do any interviews because NBC had exclusive rights on all that. So um didn't really get to do 
much outside of what NBC provided, which was still cool because it was like a, almost like a media tour for like about six hours after I had won. And that was that was really fun. But um, other than that, it was just a lot of like, go Team USA! It was so fun to watch uh, from, from the living rooms here. And it was just one of the most epic Olympics I can remember. So for you to be there in person, I mean... Just being a fan is is one thing, and obviously accomplishing a lifelong goal had to be, uh, you know, I can't even imagine how big it was. Now that you're back, are you still uh, planning on wrestling at the World Championships? Definitely. Love it. Love Definitely. It. Oh, yeah. Like, why not? Why not? Right? Like, it's literally like three months after the Olympics, and it's it's another tournament that I get to put under my, uh, my belt. So why not do it? Challenge myself. Peak form, you know, dominating, just rolling through everyone. Let's keep it going. <laughs> so <laughs> I was looking back at your background, understanding you got started in wrestling in high school, you know, Katie, Texas. I think a lot of people are familiar with that name, but other than that, don't know a lot about your early journey. How did, uh, how did your sister kind of walk you through your initial phases into the sport? Um, so initially I was in track and field and, uh, when she had joined the wrestling team, um, they had asked the, the, the females to go out there and recruit some athletes and she had recruited me and, uh, I didn't, I didn't want to be in it. Didn't, didn't appreciate it whatsoever. Like you guys see how wrestling is. Imagine to a track girl who wore hoops, makeup, you know, got her hair done every single day for uh, for track and field. It, it just it was it was almost detestable to me. But um, she told me to hang in there for about a month until our um, our dual our first dual meet, and I ended up winning against a state qualifier. And shoot, the rest is history. That was your first dual meet, the, uh, coming yeah. in against the state qualifier. Two weight classes up, too. Jeez. Now, and you know, wrestling in Texas isn't uh, historically thought to be, you know, a power, a power, powerhouse state, so to speak. But you know, obviously that that's changed over the last twenty years. So, what was like the wrestling culture like at the Texas State Tournament? Were the girls competing with the guys at the same time, or how did that work? Yeah, so sorry. We um the the men and women were competing against each other, uh, not into, against each other, but competing with each other side by side. We have it. It honestly is just like world championships. We had men's matches and women's matches, and um we were able to be uh side by side next to our classmates and teammates all the time, and that was awesome because we were like the biggest cheerleaders. And Morgan Ranch was. And in my honest opinion, at that time, one of the most all-time family-oriented wrestling teams I had ever encountered in my entire career, which was a super short career because <laughs> I just started <laughs> that year. But just from what I had seen in uh, at uh, like at other schools, like when other schools like their camaraderie, it was it was it was there, but. Morton Ranch was by far the most family oriented team I had ever seen. Like the parents were involved as well as the kids. And it was, it was freaking incredible. So just imagine uh, being, being on the mat and you have senior parents, freshman parents alike, just cheering you on, giving you nicknames and just being a part of the team. And it, it was freaking incredible. I, I loved it. I wow. Loved it. That's, I mean, the culture was that strong like, compared to even what you see now. Yes, it was that strong. Like, I can't even describe it to you, Ryan. It was awesome. I know one of my, um, one of my coaches who's no longer there at Morton Ranch, he had left for a head coach spot and he wanted to actually come back to Morton Ranch because there's nothing like Morton Ranch's camaraderie like it it can't be matched and uh like even now like what I think 12 years later like I can still feel it and people still contact me to this day from that team just telling me how proud they are like parents and athletes alike and it's great it's have you gone back to the old high school yet not yet 
What? You know, They're going to welcome you with just a, fest a festival. Uh, there is a plan for something like that. Uh, me and my twin are actually going to be being, being put in the Hall of Fame. And uh, they're going to be announcing it at, I think, I think it's like the homecoming game or something. I don't know. There's a lot going down when I get to Texas. I'll just say that. Get her back to the Lone Star State. What are we doing, folks? We got an Olympian champion here. We're going to go <laughs> crazy for you down there. Um, I can't believe you haven't been back yet. I, we got to we gotta get on that. I know. <laughs> so how did you uh, how did you end up at Wayland Baptist then? Because you, you were dominant in high school, you know, state champ, two time state champ. What was that journey like? Um, it was almost kind of a blur. Like I I didn't really understand how good I was, and I I just go out there and just be me. Like my coaches would tell me to actually slow down like slow the match down because I get off the mat too quickly and they have to tell me to take down the person and then cut them and I'd look at them and go are you freaking kidding me you want me to cut these people I want to dominate them they're like no we got to build your cardio up cut them when you're cut them out <laughs> so um that was that was kind of like my 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 experience except for like the girls that were pretty difficult like Katie Katie High School was by far one of our toughest um opponents and I'd never I they'd never tell me to cut her they just be like freaking go out there and like pulverize her as best you can like go out there and take her but um my my wrestling career in high school was a lot of take down cut take down cut dominate where you can and take down cut where you could but um a lot of it was just really fun and man I, I had a blast in high school I can't wait to go back and just man say hi to everybody be in those those small hallways again that's gonna be awesome I can't wait to just see coverage of it you know people are gonna be so excited yeah so Given your high school success, did you ever consider like going out of the state for college to like King College or, or King's College? Is it um, like any of like some of the more traditional power programs in women's wrestling? I did. Um, I thought about it, but they didn't really want my twin until she had proved herself mm. to uh, to them. Because she, at the time she wasn't a state champ and I was and Wayland Baptist were more than willing where coach Cobb was he he was like we'll take the both of you like <laughs> and then she became a state champion and they were like we already said we take the both of you <laughs> so um that's I we we of course considered going out of state but at the same time Texas is like home and yeah. we didn't want to go any further than we had to and uh there was a few bonuses at uh Waylon being in Texas being close to a, a specific guy that I super had a crush on because you know high school mentality boys are in your head right <laughs> and <laughs> I hear you played the long game with that one right staked it out over multiple years <laughs> I did I definitely did I'm a chill kind of patient person I'll wait to get mine <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, it it was just a lot of a lot of factors, and that was one of them. And yeah, I mean, you've you've met Coach Cobb. That oh guy my is god, crazy. like he's great. He's crazy. So before we get to Coach Cobb, I gotta know: Did you and your sister win state the same year, like the first year she won it, or were you already out of high school at that time? Oh no, no, we're twins. So twins. That's right. So same year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, that had I to be a pretty epic moment, right? It. Oh my gosh. What, how do I describe it? She, so I won it the year before and the year that she was in the finals, I was in the finals and we were back to back weight classes. I was 128 or I think she was either 138 and I was 148. I think that's what it was. And I had to go up right after her. And when I tell you, Ryan, I had more nerves for her than for me. I was freaking out. Like if there was footage of, oh my gosh, it was, it was just incredible. I, I was just screaming at her. Get out! Get out! She's like 
sprawling back to the center, just extremely tired. That girl's a comeback kid, like no other. And when she won, I was like, yeah, that's right. Now let me go do the work. <laughs> <laughs> and I went over there and I did my work and I was like, yes, dual state champions. We did it. <laughs> it was awesome. So they let you watch her match. Because some, yeah. some coaches are like, you can't watch because it's too too up and down. No, no, I was I was right there. I was pacing back and forth going, Utsuma, you got to stay focused. Oh, no, she needs you. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, it was definitely intense. It was, it was intense. It's making me sweat right now. Like, it was awesome. <laughs> and so how did she do the year before? She didn't get to wrestle. She was wow. injured for almost two and a half years. Oh, wow. So she, man, that's pretty special. Then like, you know, the first time she gets to come back, you win it together. Yes. Wow. Yes. yes. She, so, yeah, she didn't have a lot of experience under her belt uh, when she went to state championships, but she had way more heart than I ever did. And she loved more. She loved wrestling more than I did. So it was only wow. a matter of time. It, like when I tell you it was a comeback story, it 100% was. She got injured in a wrestling match and she said, it doesn't matter. I'm going to come back and I'm going to win it. And she became our second state champion ever at our school. Wow. Awesome. That's amazing. What kind of entry was it? Uh, she blew out her knee and she got nerve damage. So she ended up wow. getting foot drop. And so she's not able to lift her, uh, her toes at all. Her, her foot is numb. And like, she, she wrestled? Her, and she wrestled. She tore her ACL, her MCL, like so many ligaments got stretched out, not torn, but stretched out. It was bad. It was extremely wow. They told her that like, she wasn't going to be able to wrestle. And she was like, cool story, bro. <laughs> she gets it done that's amazing yeah so awesome. when when was the first time the great johnny cobb entered your life phone call like how did it go down like did he recruit you guys up there um it was i honestly don't remember when the first conversation was with johnny cobb but i do remember our first face-to-face -face conversation it was at um it was at state championships and he was I don't exactly remember like how the conversation went but he said you want to go to the Olympics and I said yep absolutely sir I've got a heart of gold and he was like really <laughs> no. you got a heart of gold huh <laughs> okay a lot of people say that and I was like nope I want to go to the Olympics <laughs> you like, knew it okay. then yeah I knew it then I knew it two years before no what yeah. where did that come from um just a natural ability I felt God had given me from from wrestling I was in track and field so I already knew I was athletic but mm -hmm. I didn't really go to state like I did at like I did in wrestling and wrestling it was like natural like are you kidding me like it was like I was born for it so wow. that year I had uh, talked to one of my teammates um, in field and, you know, track and field and, and track and field. And I had said, we should go to the Olympics together, her in shot put and discus and me in the Olympics. And that was the very first year that I had started wrestling. So did you keep doing track? So sorry to interrupt. Did you keep doing track and field after? I did. That was rough. You did. <laughs> I did. I finally quit um, halfway into senior year. I was just like, I, I can't, I can't do both these sports, but for, I think two, yeah, for two and a half years, I, I did both sports and it was rough, but I just felt really um, drawn to it. Cause you know, I'm a pretty loyal person and yeah. it was really hard to, to quit because coach Hayes, she was cool. <laughs> she was I'm sure cool. she Sure, she understands now, though, looking back. I mean, that's that's pretty cool to have, uh, you know, all those people in your story kind of leading up to this uh, yeah. Olympic journey that we all just witnessed. Yeah. <laughs> Tell yeah. us about the impact Coach Cobb made on your life once you got to college. Um, He was almost like Coach Dad. Yeah, he pretty much not let me do what I want, but if I wanted hot fries, 
after a tournament, he'd be like, ah, let her have the hot fries. <laughs> he just, he just be coach dad. He, um, I don't even know how to describe him. Like he, he would always make sure that we behaved ourselves, but at the same time, he, because he knew who he, who he had recruited, he didn't really have to keep tight reins on us. Mm-hmm. And so like we, we pretty much were free to do what we want because we were, we, I, me personally, I feel like we were responsible enough to take care of ourselves. But um, he was, he's an old guy that is extremely strong. And so when he would show us moves in practice, gosh, we'd be like, ah, get off of me, Coach Cup. Jeez, you're so strong. Stop. Show it on somebody else. Like he's he's just a really um, proactive and interactive person uh, to have in a wrestling room. And he has a lot of energy too. Like he does cartwheels and, well, he did cartwheels and backflips. <laughs> he's a little older now. But even back then, when he was like, what, 60 years old, that's still freaking incredible. But he just has a lot of energy about him and so much charisma. And he is somebody that like brightens up the room. His accent just throws you off. You're like, what are you? Is there an accent there? I don't really. I I grew up in Texas and I don't sound like that. I don't understand. <laughs> but um yeah, he's just a loving person and a a loving personality. And he just invites you into your, into his home. And um, yeah, his wife is also Miss freaking Miss Beverly. She's incredible. And his daughters, like they're, they're freaking phenomenal. Like he, I just felt like he's just such a warming person. He just invites you into his life and uh, who he is. And he's retired like four times too. He just can't really get away from wrestling. It's it's funny. He's like, I'm retiring. And then you see him coaching again. You're like, what? He's like, I have to stay away. Wrestling just got a hold on me, which it does. It has a hold on all of us. You try to get away, but if you love it a lot, uh, find some way to bring you back. But uh, yeah, Coach Cobb's freaking amazing. And I am so happy I went to school and got to be coached underneath him. <laughs> he's great he's unbelievable like you said passion i mean spunkiness fire i mean one of the most memorable interviews i've ever done and it was actually in person with him at amarillo and i think it's amarillo has a strong accent everyone there it was really thick and uh man all love to to my friends in amarillo but it was of all places i've been like man it is strong there and coach cobb he was just featured in a documentary we did on Brandon Slay and everyone, you know, not everyone, but people would call him and they're like, who was that high school coach? The, the crazy, exciting guy. I'm like, that's Johnny Cobb. <laughs> I loved him. So he's, uh, he's popular amongst the podcast listeners. And I just think it's cool. <laughs> he's coached two Olympic champs. How many people yeah. can say that? Oh man, not a lot of people. Coach Cobb, he when he sees it, he sees it. That's freaking incredible. I know he's man. you. I mean, and and you know, as far as I've gotten back in the gotten back into the sport since like 2018, you've been dominating. This year at the Olympic trials, you step up in the finals against a teenager. What <laughs> what did you know about Kennedy Blades before that series got underway? That last time I saw her, she was 12. so um it was kind of a shocker first of all to see how tall she was and second of all to um shoot not freaking underestimate her because I went in there going she's still 12 and then going holy freaking crow uh there's a reason why she made it to the finals yikes (laughs) get your head on right what kind of feel does she bring um she it's almost like a folk style feeling. And I hadn't felt that in a really, really, really long time. Like, I think, yeah, nine years to be exact. So it was, it was kind of a, uh, a new feeling. Well, not a new feeling, but a feeling I hadn't felt in a long time. And it was great. I I loved feeling it. It it made it so exciting (laughs) because it was a feeling that I hadn't felt. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is different let's keep going let's wrestle (laughs) so um it was great but other than other than that like I didn't know much like of what she had to offer leading up to the match 
Uh, that's not really my style. I don't really focus on the person. I pretty much make the adjustments during the match and I made the adjustments during the match. Yeah. It's interesting you say folk style because she, uh, you know, as, as young as she is, she's been wrestling a lot of girls only freestyle, but coming up, she wrestled folk style with the boys in middle school and the Illinois middle school circuit is nasty. And she was the first girl ever to win. And so she's been a name people have been hearing about for a while, but then at the trials, you see her tech fall force Molinari, an elite elite competitor. And you're like, what are we witnessing here? And then you, uh, you know, you handled this, the series, no doubt, but it was just fascinating to see you at the peak of your prime and this young rising star it was just such an interesting contrast. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. And it was fun to, yeah, just witness like her going through everybody in 68 kilograms. It was, it was definitely exciting. And I wasn't too, I didn't really focus too much on it, but when I heard about uh, like who she would beat, I just go, what? Really? <laughs> oh man, this, this, that match. I'm like, had I saw some of the matches, I would have been more prepared, but it was still super fun and I wouldn't have had it any other way. And I'm excited for her. Like she just won junior worlds. Like, well, a yeah. lot of them did. Good Lord. Good Lord. Right. There's pen and people over there. Yeah. I'm like, uh, the future is bright. I say so myself. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. So, um, yeah, I'm excited for all of them. It's, yeah. it's going to be awesome. Now, when did you move to the training center in Colorado? Mm. So at first, me and my husband had moved to the training center in, uh, before the Olympic trials in 2016. He told me that I needed to if I wanted to make that 2016 team, I couldn't stay at Wayland. I needed to go train at the Olympic Training Center. So we first made that move then. And then we had decided together to go back to Wayland uh, to finish college. And so after we, 2016, after 2016. So we stayed there for a year, trained, you know, and then went back to Wayland and then came back to uh, Colorado. I believe in 2017, like 2018. What was the transition like living uh, at the OTC? I cried like the first week or so <laughs> after practice. Why is that? <laughs> because I had to wrestle against Randy Miller, Elena Periscova, uh, El Elena Periscova, Aaron Claudio, um, Adeline Gray, um, I think Iris Smith as well. I, I was just wrestling literally like the number one women mm. of that time every single day. And Adeline came up to me one day after practice and she was like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm trying to be the best. She's like, yeah, but you keep wrestling with the number ones. Like go wrestle with like number twos and number threes and number fours. Like, like get a, get a fill out for everyone. You don't just have to keep torturing yourself and <laughs> wrestling with the number one girls. And I'm like, but I want to be the best. She's like, I know, but just chill out for a little bit. Like build your self-esteem up. I'm like, ah, Okay, thank that line. <laughs> so that's what that was like. It was rough. It was really rough. And uh, after that, I started wrestling with number twos and number threes, started getting better. And I was right back at it, wrestling number ones. I didn't stay away long. <laughs> How long after that? Like a couple of weeks you were feeling good? Uh, probably a week or so after, not even a couple. Like, uh, it was it was soon. I was like, because I, I feel like I bounced back pretty darn quick. And uh, actually, Elena Periscova would um, use me a lot at practice, uh, like a whole, whole lot. So it was it was cool. It was cool that she um, saw that potential in me and that she utilized me a lot. And the same with Randy Miller, like both of them just um like just took me under the wing and Adeline too, they just all get to, kind of like took me under their wing and like gave me advice here and there to help me out along the way. And it was super cool. And I'm so happy I get to do that for other people. Like people are going to be saying my name once they with me. <laughs> Mira took me under her wing. She made me dance with her one time. <laughs> <laughs> so true. I mean, think about that though. Like you, you won this year, it's 2021. You've been out there on the grind since 2015 and obviously way before that even, but you know, so in 2016, heading into the trials, were you favored to win that tournament? 
I don't think so. It might have been an upset. I'm not really sure because Randy Miller was in that weight class. Um, and uh, who else? Uh, Brittany Roberts was also in that weight class. And like she was um, one of the dominants as well. But she ended up beating Randy Miller. And honestly, I don't know. Because Elena Periscope was at the weight class below me uh, okay. that year. I don't know. I, I Sorry. I'm so sorry. Just curious. And because uh, I looked at the finals and it looks like you controlled the score in the finals and, uh, you know, you won the trials. Everyone knows that you didn't get to wrestle in 2016. I'm sure it was a, a life changing event. How did you process that and kind of like get back, get back on the horse after 2016? Oh, man, that's a good question. I think it was uh, a lot to do with my faith because I don't even freaking know how I bounced back. There was a lot of anger and regret back then. A lot of sleepless nights of me going, why? Why did that? Why? (laughs) But um, somehow I managed. Um, Terry Steiner, he gave me some really good advice uh, a few years later. But um, I honestly don't know how I processed it. Like it. Like even now, like it haunts me today. I keep bringing it up, <laughs> but, but I think I have since made amends with myself. <laughs> but, um, I only ask to shed advice to the youngsters listening who are trying to get you know maybe get over something you know big in their life and and you know how did uh, how did one of our champions do it? So what I what I would have to say is um, I relied heavily on my faith and my family. And I made sure that I knew that wrestling was not who I was. So yeah, I got defeated, but that's not who I am. So I had to make sure I could bounce back. And look, I'm a I'm a Christian woman before I'm a wrestler. So you are not just a wrestler. Like I still had to go to school. I still had to do my homework. The world still moved. I I still had to keep on like keep on keeping on so there was a there was definitely a lot of what do I do now you keep you keep working you keep trying you just keep doing so honestly I think that's how I just managed because it was it was rough like imagine being that close away from your dream like everybody's experienced it but um you're you're stronger than you know you are and um I felt like I wasn't, I was never gonna like come out of that. And then a few months later, I'm like, oh, I never want to feel this again. And then I felt it again. (laughs) Didn't learn after that. Didn't learn after that. It took me a few times to pick myself back up again and keep on trying. So like, it's, it's not going to happen like that. So keep moving forward, you guys. And for me, it's relying on faith and family. For everybody else, it could be different. Like, I don't know. Some right. people like running. Run your little heart out, but not too much. <laughs> I love the uh, detaching the identity from just being a wrestler only, though. That's That's got to be big. Oh, it's super huge for me. Because I, I am not just a wrestler. I haven't been a wrestler my whole life. There's some people who've been doing it since they were two, three years old. Not me. I started when I was 15. And so I just learned to detach myself from wrestling though I know that wrestling has given me so much of who I am like I found my husband in it uh well I lost my father and my best friend in it like all all my most of my friends came from wrestling um most of what I do in my life has to do with wrestling but at the same time if wrestling was taken away from me tomorrow I know who I would be and that's like super important to me to be someone outside of this sport because I know a lot of people once they get to where I'm at today like yeah I'm an Olympic champion what's next after that and I'm going Mm -hmm. no 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 it is not lonely at the top I know exactly what I want to do after this this is not who I am this is just a part of me so that's something that I definitely want to like just get the message out for people is yeah like wrestling can get you but it, it is a means to an end it will get to it will get you where you need to be but it's not who you are so i i'm like just thank you for sharing that that's yeah. that's amazing ah. amazing and 
when you were referring to that, it was a you know multi-year journey. You know, in 2017, got to the world championships. I think maybe a seventh or a ninth. 2018 bronze. 2019 world champ. Wow. I mean, that's and wrestler of the year. <laughs> that I mean, that had to be obviously up to that time the biggest tournament of your life. But I mean, how does that compare? It and kind of looking back on that to the Olympics. Oh man. Um looking back at that that just makes me smile like that was so <laughs> awesome I felt like I was way more emotional when I won the world championships than when I won uh the Olympics like world championships it took me like 45 minutes to compose myself and it, <laughs> it was it was rough like I couldn't do any interviews I was heaving and huffing <laughs> they were like oh uh give her give her some time she got <laughs> snot coming out of her nose but for the olympics i was like oh oh my gosh yay you know cried a little but i honestly felt like it was because of maybe like the lack of people i was able to compose myself a little bit better because at world championships there were so many people there so many oh yeah and at the olympics you know there there wasn't that many and like i guess like the crowd didn't really like hit me like it did at world championships don't get me wrong the olympics i would do that a thousand more times before i did world championships but um i guess that's how i would compare it and i'm honestly glad like because i remember my mom had also said tamara your interviews you like you got to learn to compose yourself baby like you you look at you like that was that was that was pretty rough and so this year I felt like I I did my mom a favor did her a solid I composed myself that much faster so that speech went by or I guess speech yeah went viral that was amazing to see everywhere you looked that thing was everywhere I know that was ridiculous I did not plan that (laughs) <laughs> I, I didn't understand why that happened but um I was truly grateful that so many people were um so refreshed and um loved hearing my message because so I'm just trying to spread a lot of love and joy their way so that was cool <laughs> it was and it came through I just want to thank you for coming on the podcast you know something we ask a lot of the listener or a lot of the uh a lot of the guesses, you know, how did wrestling change your life? You're still in the thick of it, but you know, like, how would you say wrestling has impacted or, or changed your life um, thus far? It's given me, a, I honestly can say wrestling's changed my life because it's given me a voice that I didn't think that I had. And now I can share it with the world. I love it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tamara. We really appreciate you coming on. Thank you, Ryan. And that's the end of this episode. Thank you to our sponsor, Spartan Combat. For exclusive Yanni Diakamahalas apparel, please go to SpartanCombat.com. To see video clips from this interview, go to Wrestling Changed My Life on Instagram. That's it, and we'll see you next time, folks. 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 See you next time, folks.